In this video I'm going to talk about genetic testing and why. Well um, the main reason is because I've been sponsored by a company called 23andMe to take one of its tests and so this seems like a, an opportune moment to talk about what that sort of company does. Now there are many uh, companies that do this sort of thing and some others did actually ask me to um, accept their sponsorship but I turned them down. Uh, but 23andMe I you know for various reasons I looked into the company and I had a bit more confidence in them. You see there are there are some charlatans in, in this sort of field. Uh, there are companies, for instance, in Scotland who will tell you what your clan ancestry is and what your clan tartan is. You might not know that you had any Scottish ancestry, but they'll find some, they'll find some. And there are, there are daft charlatans who run heraldry companies who will tell you what your coat of arms is. It's a largely spurious coat of arms, but they will find somehow, they will dig deep and find some pathetic excuse for why you might somehow associate yourself with some previously existing bit of heraldry which really has nothing to do with you but but what the hell you've paid them good money so they're going to find you a coat of arms. Uh, so there are companies out there that uh, one should perhaps not have dealings with. Um, I'm not going to name any because that would be unfair but the point is that um, I've, a number of people have written to me um, and they have said they've taken tests, uh, genetic tests, and they have said to, oh and I am a direct descendant of King Alfred the Great yeah, um, I hate to, have to break it to these people, and and sometimes I, you know, I like to let them live in their in their little fantasy lands. But if you've got uh, any English genes in you, you're near certainly a descendant of Alfred the Great and loads of other kings. Whilst we're at it, we pretty much all are. Um, but uh, these people don't get told that they're a descendant of pretty much every uh, uh, English king from the early medieval period, because that would that would, that would set off alarm bells. They'd look at this and think, oh, it seems that there's nothing very special about being a descendant. But oh, if they just tell you the name of one king that you're a descendant from, oh, wow, well, in that case, ha, huh, I'm a direct descendant. I, I should be inheriting a throne of some sort anytime soon. It makes you feel so much more special. Um, and uh, I know that people have been told that they've got Viking genes, Viking genes, because there are an awful lot of people there who will pay good money to hear that they've got Viking genes and that there's science behind it. I've got Viking. There's no such thing as a Viking gene. No such thing. Uh, the Vikings were pirates. They were raiders. Um, to say you've got Viking genes is like saying you've got accountancy genes. Uh, no, there's no gene for going raiding. Uh, you may have ancestors who spoke Norse and lived in what is today Scandinavia. Uh, yes, th that has some meaning, but Viking genes! As soon as you, someone, someone's uh, telling you that you've got Viking genes, they, they're, they're just selling you a, a concept and idea. And um, a lot of people as well uh, get uh, very caught up in, in Celtic genes. But don't forget, the Celts were a linguistic group. There were people who spoke uh, a language which was from that particular branch of Indo-European and there were people speaking uh, Celtic languages in Scotland and Wales and Cornwall and the Isle of Man and Spain and Turkey and just about everywhere in between. Um, so uh, the, the term uh, Celtic uh, when referred to a people like this it didn't uh, come into being until the 19th century. Some scholar went, oh do you know what, all these languages seem to be quite related. I, I wonder if there were some people in the part, yeah. Um, so the idea that uh, you are part of some genetic fellowship just because some distant ancestor of yours spoke one of the many versions of Celtic uh, is it's not tremendously meaningful. But there are some people out there who will pay, again, good money to learn that they are Celts because that's what they wanted to be. Uh, there are some people who uh, set great store by being pure something or other, the, inheritor, the inheritors of something or other. And so if you are the sort of person who sets tremendous uh, store by the fact that you are pure, I don't know, Basque or Finnish or Anglo-Saxon or something, then possibly you shouldn't be taking one of these tests because you're near certain to find out that you're not pure because we're all mongrels, you know, we're all descended from loads of those people. Ultimately, we're, all humans are related to all other humans. Uh, and, and I can't see you uh, from where I am, uh, but regardless of your skin colour, you're probably 99.5% at least related to me. Um, and uh, that doesn't actually, that may, may sound a lot, but it, you know, to set it in context, um, if you were a chimpanzee, I'm not saying you are a chimpanzee, but if, it, if, there were, if there were a chimpanzee just watching this video by coincidence sitting next to you, I don't know, um, that chimpanzee would be something like 98.4% uh, related, uh, related to me. Uh, in fact, that moth that's fluttering against your window trying to get out, uh, that moth is about 68% related to me. In fact, yeast is about 38% related to me. You see, in biology, um, genes have got to solve some problems. They've got to, well, one of the first things they've got to do is create a cell. 
So if you've got a creature made out of cells, which is you know, creatures, um, then you've got to create that, uh, that, that cell wall and the nucleus and then all the various organs within the cell which actually run the cell and all, all the, the chemistry which happens in the cell, which is very, very complicated. And then the cell has to be discrete. And somehow, how do you create the cell in the first place? You've got to get nutrients and put them together somehow. So you've got to have a mechanism for that. The problem of creating a cell is one of the really big problems that genes have, have got. So um, if uh, um, the genes in a moth are able to solve it, then they're probably doing pretty much the same job in me. So the fact that uh, we are all extremely closely related doesn't really mean all that much. But of course, it's that 0.05% difference between us. That's the interesting bit. That's the bit we want to know about. The bit that makes you you and, 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 and me not you. Um, and uh, 23andMe looks at about 600,000 loci, little, little addresses, if you like, on the chromosomes, and, and to, where we now, because of science, have reason to believe that there are genes which tell us something useful, tell us something interesting about what makes one person that person and not another. Um, so uh, that sounds like a lot, doesn't it? 600,000. But there's, there are an awful lot of genes in the genome, uh, so it's only a little sampling. Um, these, these uh, services are getting more and more powerful, and the fact that they're able to look for not very much money um, at 600,000 loci is pretty flipping impressive. And uh, uh, when I um, uh, talked about uh, 23andMe to some of my friends who have got uh, uh, degrees in genetics, and, uh, and they, they looked at what they were doing and the kit that they were doing it with, ooh, polymorphic biosensors, they said, and made ooh noises. I don't but anyway, the point is that um, this technology has been coming on in leaps and bounds, and so there are now machines that are enormously more efficient than uh, machines used to be, and it's now um, reasonably cost-effective to look at 600,000 um, genes uh, from, sampled from a member of the public who spits into a pot, and that's what I'll be doing. They've sent me this pack. It says uh, in, in friendly letters on the front, Welcome to you, it says. Health and ancestry. Uh, the reason it says health and ancestry there uh, is because uh, you can have the, the health, um, sorry, the ancestry or the health and an ancestry services. And in the case of the ancestry one, it looks at uh, the genes which make you uh, likely to be from one of 31 groups of people. That's 31 groups of people around the world. I don't actually know which 31 they are, but clearly there are more than 31 groups of people around the world. But there are certain uh, distinct uh, identifiable uh, groups of people who are identified by particular genes which they are able to look for. The database is, is, has got that good. Um, and as databases, of course, become bigger, as more and more people around the world take part in this sort of thing, the databases will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and so they'll be able to give more and more accurate information about um, where your genes came from. Also, the more people who are related to each other um, take part, uh, the, the more they can tell you. So, for instance, if um, your brothers and sisters and parents all take part in this sort of thing, uh, then they'll be able to look at the, the genes and go, oh, that's interesting. So you and your brother have got that gene, but your sister hasn't. Uh, but um, your mother's got that and your father's got that. And Oh, wait a minute. Right. So that must mean it came from your mother's father. All oh, right. So it came down that path. And of course, uh, uh, the more people take part, the more generations they can go back and, and the more you will learn. But you can still learn quite a bit if you go for this uh, solo. Uh, so um, uh, this is the packet they, they sent me. Um, and uh, on the back, it uh, tells me that I registered my kit. Uh, there's a, there's a barcode number and so forth to make sure that this is quite definitely associated with me and not anyone else, so there's no uh, getting anything muddled up. And then I spit into the pot provided and then uh, send it off. They analyze it and then uh, a few weeks later I can go on uh, online and look up what information they've uh, found out about me. Uh, there are some, um, it says here, small cap may pose a choking hazard hmm. for idiots, I imagine. Right, so. Uh, dispensing with that and getting into the box now. I see. Right. I so this is uh, this is the packaging. Uh, so there's a there's the pot in there with its, with its lid and some instructions which are printed in very small writing. Why did they have to print them in quite such small writing? Okay. No food or drink for 30 minutes. Uh, that'll be 30 minutes before I do this, which is uh, handy because I I've done neither of those things. Spit to the fill line. Hmm, that's a not insignificant amount of spit. This may take a while. Uh, then close the funnel, detach the funnel, screw on the cap, seal it in the bag and mail it in the kit. OK, so there's a return label on the box, so it's all pretty simple. So uh, I will now do the deed. I uh, get the uh, pot out. Uh, there's a bag in there. Wait, oh, 
rather insultingly, it says it says biohazard on on the bag that I'm meant to seal this in. It's only my spit. Is my spit not a biohazard? I've 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 never I've never infected anyone with anything seriously dangerous by kissing them or anything. Biohazard. It's just my spit, the cheek of it. Anyway, so there's a yeah funnel at the top, fill to the line. Yeah, I think I just uh, so here we go, everyone. Um, now some minutes of spitting. I think I might use some time lapse here. Normally, I find if I bite my tongue, that helps me salivate. Ow. Yep, I did it. Ah, the bottom of the pot wasn't where I thought it was. I thought it was there. Right, um, so I seem to have uh, uh, anything that slightly overfilled it now, but there's a, it's a little bit frothy, so you know, maybe it'll settle. Ah, I think we're fine. So uh, I now close the lid, remove that, drop it on the floor, get the cap, screw it on, stick it in the biohazard bag, and then uh, stick it in the box and mail it back to the lab. And uh, then we'll see what happens. So um, one of the things they test for is uh, whether you uh, have, well, how many Neanderthal genes you have. Uh, it should be, it should be uh, quite interesting. Um, and then another thing that they look for are what they call traits. These are little quirks. Um, it might be some things, of course, uh, which are just uh, trivial, like uh, do, you, do you sneeze when sunlight hits you or after eating chocolate? Uh, do you have a, a cleft in your chin? Um, or uh, ah, do I have though? <laughs> yeah, because you can't tell, can you? Uh, which, you see, some of the things you could learn from just looking in the mirror. Friend, what eye colour do you have? Whoa, wow, I found out my eye colour. Oh, wait a minute, I think I knew that because I'd once looked in a mirror. Um, and of course, if they uh, were to uh, find this video and they could probably just by looking at me uh, on the screen get a certain amount of information out of me, hmm, I think he's male. Uh, we can say, yeah, yeah, grows a magnificent beard. Yeah, tell him that. Um, but it's interesting though, isn't it, that if you do have a cleft in your chin, oh, wow, they've, and I, they've got a gene which is associated with that. Um, and um, uh, you know, all these little traits, how deep a sleeper you are, for instance, are you a light sleeper or a heavy sleeper? Um, so a lot of these traits, though, are, you may say trivial, and they're sort of interesting in that, uh, um, that they have a genetic origin. Um, there are other things which are health related, um, how likely you are to be overweight or underweight, um, how likely you are uh, to develop certain diseases, perhaps in later age, um, uh, short-sightedness and so forth. Oh dear, I was hoping to get through this without a cut, but here it is, a cut. I was talking about genetic testing, but it has been pointed out to me that this statement is potentially misleading because the particular tests I'm having done do not check specifically for genes associated with short-sightedness, although they do check for some things to do with eyesight. Sorry about that, my mistake. Share values may go sideways as well as Wednesday. Other means of contraception are available. Do not run with scissors. Now, these tests are in no way a substitute for going to see your doctor. If you're ill, go to your doctor. Um, they, they can't diagnose you remotely from your spit. Uh, with all these conditions. There are so many things, uh, whether you smoke, uh, how much exercise you do, how old you are, there are so many other factors uh, that don't show up in your spit that uh, you know, there's th th no way it, are these tests a substitute for going to see a doctor. Um, but um, I will mail this off and uh, when the results come back I, I, will, um, I will share with you what those results are and uh, my feelings as well about having learned these things about me. Um, or learn these probabilities. A lot of the, a lot of the things that they, they say are expressed in probabilities. You, are, you, are, you have a, a so many percentage chance of getting this disease or having this trait or whatever it is. Um, and, and I'll see how accurate it is because well, it's interesting, isn't it? A lot of people are doing these um, and perhaps in the future, so many will have done them that they will become really uh, very uh, accurate and telling. And people will become also more familiar with how best to interpret the results of these because um, uh, when uh, people are given the results of these things, 
they have to be given a certain amount of advice as well because I think some people get and have in the past got somewhat carried away um, by uh, the, the results thinking oh this tells me this and this and this and proves that and explains that whereas words like prove and explain um, uh, are perhaps uh, inappropriate um, uh, the, the things are suggested by and um, correlated with anyway so see you in a few weeks and there's more for my viewers because you're all so lovely. Uh, 23andMe is running a holiday season offer. Yes, it's good until the 26th of December this year. Uh, you can click on the link in the description or if you prefer typing, you can go to www.23andMe.com stroke Lindy Beige and uh, see all the details about the offer there. So there. Lindy Beige!